Hello and welcome to this Accomplished Beginners Blender tutorial number 18. In this tutorial I would like to show some renders and models that and what the effects of using the sun as a light source can be. In this model, I'll just play this real quick, uh, we have this camera and we have the sun and the sun is rotating and for the long long part here it's night and then the sun reaches over the horizon right by there and it moves over here a little bit over here too and so it changes its direction somewhat and then goes up you know way up and um, stops there in about seeing it and we can look at the parameters of the light too it's a pretty strong light its energy is 10 uh, the sun atmosphere intensity is 10, distance is 3, so it's this, the in scattering is pulled down a little bit, so it, that limits some of the haze. Uh, but uh, basically, this should be a rather hazy sun, sunrise. So let's look at the actual rendering here. And let's go full screen screen and as you can see the dark blue sky is is the world sky which works really good because then when the when the light is off you get this uh, suitable dark blue sky and here you can see the light come over the horizon starts to cast its hazy shadows and now it's way over the right, and now it's starting to be right overhead. And also you can realize that the sunlight in itself is, is insufficient to illumine the scene. It just creates a lot of, uh, um, what you can say, light drama or uh, creates a lot of um, interesting shades and you can get that environmental haze, but in terms of illumining objects that you might want to have more fully fleshed out it's not really sufficient just it's going to be it's too harsh of a shadow here you have no light up so you have to find a way to lighten up the the shades so that's that and then that's what i so to speak set out to do in this particular model because this is the model that we created in uh, blend uh, the uh, tutorial number 16 and in this tutorial or in this model I've experimented with rotating the sunlight or the sun which is I think over here uh, no that's a hemispherical light okay we have there's the sun and this hemispherical light these two we have um, worked on rotating them and I can just play that from the start here uh, go back to number one and you can see how these two are rotating around the x-axis and uh, um, so if we stop right there and uh, render that we should get uh, uh, the result where where the Sun is uh, not casting any light on the scene but the uh, hemispherical light is to some degree or actually in this particular instance well I would have to do this in fact because this light here this hemispherical light is has no energy in this case so I'll just do this and it has zero energy so if I if I put that to one and we render that again then you'll see the effect of an up pointing hemispherical light which is uh, rather unnatural like things are illumined from underneath and that almost never happened in real life but it's a good thing to keep an open mind about it to know what kind of uh, illumination you might use to get some kind of an effect sometimes the thing is just that it 
it's not stopped by i mean it 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 will not shine through things but it's not stopped by a surface like this surface here is not stopping this surface underneath the roof underhang to overhang to be illumined which is really strange so that was just that uh, what actually happens in this particular view in terms of what i have another hemispherical light that i um, that i have animated and uh, we'll see if it shows here on this no it doesn't show on that but we can go to animation and we can uh, increase this view here and we go we can just start at the at the beginning Let's see just play that and you can see here how this the intensity of this hem hemispherical light is adjusted to fit where the rotation of the um, the sun. So this is the basic model or this is the the model that I've used to do some of this experimentation with. And what the aim is is to try to create a cycle uh, from light to dark back to light again. And then the results are as as the like this here. Here's the result when you rotate the hemispherical light. You get illumination from underneath. Here. And when you're at the apex, it does, it does not cast a shadow it's not a cast shadow but it doesn't illumine if you look at the roof overhang here it because it doesn't illumine it looks like it's a shadow so that that's why I wanted to show this it it's important to understand that the hemispherical light will still not illumine on some of the side that is so say away from what it's pointing at so that means that you have to take that into account so we'll continue with um, just the sun rotating on it on its own no atmospheric anything that's uh, really dark here and I'm not sure exactly what's illumining this scene here What I really wanted to show with this is this is a light of an intensity one, so it it uh, doesn't crank out that much light actually. The sun doesn't in this particular case. So here it's just it's in the west or east whatever it's just shining straight on and uh, this is the illumination you get so there's no absolutely no indirect anything when it's only the sun and it's not ray traced so then you won't will get kind of a like a, a light that is similar to what you get on the moon where there is no atmosphere so we'll move on to the next one and now there's a sky included in this. So we have the sky effect, still not ray traced. So it's circling around and you get you get these haze effects when it's at the horizon. So it looks like it's you know the the contrast between the bright sky and the and the absence of illumination creates this effect.
in here, it goes up again around, came around, so it's looking at this from the other side. So it's illumining this. We're, we have the we have the sun in our necks here. We have the sun coming from behind here. And this now it's coming from behind the camera. And then I just uh, decided to try to slow down the, the actual sunset part of this. Uh, so I'm just using a, a lower frame rate. You know, they the already made render and it's just a lower frame rate just to kind of step through this. And this is also a very intense light here. It's like 10, so that's why you get this wiped out effect. Move on to the next one. So here the it's the exact same thing, just with lesser intensity, so you don't get that white out effect over here. And now here I've rotated. The, this is where I rotate the hemi and the and the sun at the same time, and you get the, some pretty unnatural light effects here. Like it's it's all dark, but the hemi is just you know pushing up the light from underneath. So that's just strange. Just want to show that this here illumination from underneath very unrealistic. But if you want to use it for some special effect, I'm sure it could be useful. And here, instead, I just had this hemispherical light that I that I'm dimming with with the sun. And here, it's not properly adjusted, so you get this bump in the light. This is a mistake. It's just you know just after after sun sundown, it uh, bumps up the light, so you get this sundown, and then oh light. And then it kind of goes to where it needs to go. And in this last one here, or not quite the last one, same problem there, but at least in this case, we have we have complete complete quote unquote complete darkness at the very end here and you can see these the car lights here they're on and the the directionals it's because these materials are emitters they have em, there there's a value in the emit field on the material so that's a way to create uh, you know simulated light if you want to do that and then we look at the last one which will end up with a negative value on the hemispherical light at the end which will cause this interesting feature here and here there's a this is caused by a negative value on the hemispherical light so there's the sun is underneath the horizon and there's a really low hemisphere uh, negative value on the hemispherical light I can show you. So this just looks all norm normal. And then you get this kind of moonlight. It's like a moonlit scene. And I show you what that looks like in terms of the model. Move. You can just go to the end there back up a little bit there and let's look at uh, uh, it's this one here yeah you see here the energy of this hemispherical light is minus zero 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 two 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 nine 
So that's causing this um, this effect. So there's a plethora of possibilities, and I I just want to make this model here and show this rig because this way if you have a model you can take your lighting ideas to that and kind of rig it and try it and together with the rig I showed in number 17 you can work with your lights and I don't know maybe there are other people have completely different experiences my experience is that light lighting is very much a trial and error effort you'll have to try try out what works but also you need to know how the different light forms, how they actually work, because if you don't, you'll just be stumbling in the dark, no pun intended. So I thank you for listening. This can get kind of lengthy, but it is a vast subject and uh, very much of your success or whatever you want to call it, uh, how you feel about your renders. It depends on light because, of course, nothing will be visible if you don't have light. So that's why it's so important. And I'm sure there's tons and tons and tons of tutorials and information on this subject. I just wanted to kind of um, uh, try to, what can I say, clarify how the sun works because it's a little bit, you know, different than the other ones. So thank you for listening. I appreciate it. And, um, like, favorite, subscribe. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.